Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome with the, to another one of our hadith from the compilation of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala from the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and today we'll be coming to you with the 18 hadith from the compilation the 18 reminder from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam beautiful words and this hadith just as all the previous hadith of the, in the compilation that Imam Nawawi rahimahullah compiled it all entails regarding to the same theme regarding to the same aim and maqsad and focused it is about uplifting oneself as an individual spiritually internally and physically the hadith narrated by Abu Zar Jundu bin Junaira and Mu'azimi Jabal radiallahu anhuma, the two companions narrated this hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ittaqillah haythuma kunta A very famous word, a very famous hadith we have heard time and time again that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haythuma kunta, wherever you may be and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued Wa'ad bi'al sayyi'ata hasana and follow up an evil deed with a good deed tamhahua that this evil deed that you follow up it will this evil deed that you follow up with a good deed the good deed will wipe out the former it will wipe out the evil deed wa khaliqin nas bi khuluqin hasan and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam terminated the hadith by saying and behave and uh, encounter with people with good manners Behave good nature towards people. Deal with people with goodness and with good character. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again gave us three main simple and concise advice in this hadith and these beautiful words of his. Now from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from this specific hadith, we saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam use ittaqillah, the word taqwa. I've heard this word, this word many times in different advices. We've heard verses from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amanu, ittaqullah haqqa taqati, you fear Allah as he ought to be feared. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again emphasizing, the first and most important aspect is that of taqwa, piety, God-fearness, the meaning we can expand and give various meaning. But the whole aspect and the whole point of taqwa is to protect oneself by joining and being close towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we protect ourselves from the hellfire from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Ali radiallahu anhu when explaining to what taqwa is as Ali radiallahu anhu made mention and he said that taqwa is to protect one own self from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adhering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments and being content and give gratitude to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide one with irrespective of whether it is little in our eyes or whether it is a lot we be grateful and content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for us and a part of taqwa is also getting ourselves and preparing ourselves for the final day the day of judgment that we all have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in short as Ali Wajalani said that taqwa it consists of all of this. This is the definition that taqwa is. That not just fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having piety as we the general translation that we give, but it is had adherent to each and every command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to do and those prohibitions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid us from, we abstain from it. Being content in whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and provided for us, sustain us with, with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last but not least is that we prepare ourselves, use this world, prepare ourselves in this dunya for the day of judgment when we have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And doing that, obviously the best way of doing that is being in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this small definition is what has Ali radiallahu anhu mentioned, it's the meaning of taqwa. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started off his hadith, this hadith, this word, this advice telling us again about taqwa. And yes, in the translation, and is a normal translation that will always be used because of the vastness of the meaning of taqwa, 
we always mention is to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have piety because all of these entails and it's all part of being aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when one is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one will carry out action pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will be of us preparing ourselves for the day of judgment. When one is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one will follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstain from the prohibition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When one is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be grateful and he will be content with what whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed him with, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided him with. So being taqwa and having the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the first and foremost important aspect of each and every human being life. It is the most important quality that we need to have and implement in our life. And piety Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Prophet of Taqwa, regards to fasting, la'allakum tattaqoon. Fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you. La'allakum tattaqoon. So that you have taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this word of taqwa in the Quran in numerous places, in various instances, and is addressing you and I. And in each of those ayahs and each of those words, they all came with a different context. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used them with different, the ma'na and the meaning come, goes back towards the same asal and the same root. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala context and the way he used them was giving us a different meaning as in the form of translation. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ That fear that day when you return back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تُوَفَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يَذَمُونَ And every soul will be given what they earn. Every soul will be recompensated with what they earn and they will not be oppressed. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used word of taqwa as we all know it. We all utilize the meaning and we say fear, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, What taqu to that fear? The word here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used taqwa as fear. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the other part of the Quran, the famous ayah which we heard in time and time again, our khutbah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And there are scholars and the mufassireen, the scholars, the translators and the explanators of hadith and of Quran have mentioned that this taqwa here is referring to be in the ibadah and obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ita'atillah, to be in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi, that you, as you translate, fear Allah, to have obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be obey. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And don't pass away, don't die, except while you are submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're only submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because of fear, but because of your obedience. Because of our worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this we see, the second ma'na, the second meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilizes the word taqwa and the context that it entails. And another example I would like to highlight in the different contexts and the ma'na and the meaning that the word is used in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, May you Allah wa rasoola, wa yakhsha Allah wa yattaqih. That whosoever obey Allah and his messenger, wa yakhsha Allah, he fears Allah, and there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the word, wa yattaqih. And the word here, taqwa again, so we already had the word of khashyat Allah, the fear of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the word here, was not in the meaning of the fear as we know, but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to the word taqwa and yet taqi is that one purifying oneself from sins, that cleansing one's heart and cleaning one heart away from all the filth and the, the haram and the evilness within the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, So whosoever fear, whosoever, whosoever obey Allah and his messenger, and they fear Allah and they clean themselves from evil, they purify themselves from sins. They are they are the successful ones. Those will be the ones that are successful. So in short, this aspect of piety, this aspect of taqwa is something that we need to have in each and every time in our life. We implement it, we keep it in our life, whether in difficulty, whether in ease, whether in secret, whether in public. Whether people are looking at us or whether people are not looking at us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward is tremendous, it's endless. We cannot comprehend the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us. 
and the virtues and is numerous regarding to taqwa as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned as we mentioned here in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so they are the successful ones and what is the real success when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to success what is the success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about it is that achievement in Jannah is achieving the Jannah to fill the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jannah al naim the Jannah al khulud so we all strive to achieve and attain the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that paradise to such an extent that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he even attribute وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the best form of provision the best form of sustenance is that of taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even attributed even for mankind this is how it needs taqwa and its it needs to be in our life so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even attributed towards being the best form of provision and regards to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had give Adam alayhi salam the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover them Allah gave him the command to cover themselves Adam alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ And a garment and a clothes of taqwa, of piety, that is good, that is the best. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even attributing regards to our garment. So I'm using these two examples again. One regards to our provision, one regards to our garment. As mentioned in the Quran, and there is numerous more, there is four or five places more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attribute taqwa, attribute piety towards different aspects. And the point of this is that you and I, food, sustenance, Provision, this is something that we utilize in our life, everyday life. Clothing, garments is something that we utilize in our everyday life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attribute taqwa towards them. To show you and I that taqwa is not something that we only talk with our, with our tongue, but it's something that's physically that we have to embed it in our life. It is something where we have to keep day to day in our life with each and every step, with each and every breath. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely make us from among the successful ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us not only in this world, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us the time when we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help the most. That is in Jannah. In, sorry, not in Jannah, in on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued the hadith and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa'ad bi'il sayyata hasana tamhuha. That follow up a bad deed with a good deed, that good deed will wipe out the bad deed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned this straight after he mentioned ittaqillah haythu ma'kunt. Straight after he mentioned of the conscious, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Straight after and right after he mentioned of us to be pious and we have that piety, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that follow up uh, evil deed with a good deed. That good deed will wipe out the evil deed. To show us that even a person who may think they have taqwa or a person who have taqwa, a person who have piety can still indulge or can still fall into sin because it is what the human nature is it is what the nature of mankind is as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the beginning of creation when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to create Adam alayhi salam the malaika they mentioned the angels they mentioned of such statement that you know are you going to create such you such creation that they will cause corruption in the face of the earth and they will disobey you so sins is a nature for mankind so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is telling us here the hadith he's linking it and so say you have piety to be pious, become righteous and become pious. But follow an evil deed up with a good deed. The good deed will wipe off the evil deed to show us that even when you think you may be pious and even if you commit an evil deed, always follow it up with a righteous deed. Always follow up that wrong action with a good deed. Whatever you do, do not be despondent. Whatever wrong deed may be, follow it up with a good deed. And <clears throat> just as we see the hadith telling us here that a good deed wipe out an evil deed similarly it all depends on what we do after the the evil deed and just the same way as a good deed wipe out an evil deed vice versa it will be in the same case if the situation was to turn around by committing so much numerous and countless and uh, indulging in sins and evil deeds countlessly as if it is a norms that similarly that sin will, will be able to wipe out a good deed and it will overpower our good deeds and a point to be noted that yes we do not need to have a specific intention whenever we carry out a good deed after that sin for us to be having for us to have that sin wiped off but whenever we carry out a good deed after a sin we don't need that intention but the sin inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipe it off so an intention is not needed here and 
once we are sincere, obviously we are sincere with our good deeds that we are doing. We don't have to make the intention that this good deed is to wipe off that sin that I did so and so. No, we don't need to make that intention. The intention we definitely need to make is to be sincere in our action that we are doing this for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As in the first hadith we do. And if you miss that, let us not forget we can go back on you on the Masjid YouTube and we can review the hadith that we have finished before. And this is being our 18 hadith. There are 17 hadith already recorded and being up on the YouTube. We can always go back and have some reminders and see the connection that these hadiths have with one another. Let it not be that, you know, we listen to one today and we forget about it. We'll wait for the next one to come and we listen to that. But they all have a connection. The words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was from Mubarak lips and Mubarak mouth. Was from blessed lips and the blessed mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is always a connection. There is always something and wisdom behind it that we will never be able to understand. And as much as we read it and much as we look into it, we'll always have something new develop and something new and inclined towards it. So yes, with that being said, we heard the first, very first hadith at the beginning of this series was actions are according to one's intention. So we have to make it intention, our intention sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good action also. But we do not have to make the intention that this good action is to wipe off that evil sin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah accept our action, our good action and he will wipe off our evil sin. Now with regards to how sins are being wiped off, Scholars have discussed that and there have been differ difference of opinion among scholars in, new in centuries and until today. But nevertheless, the point all come back towards the same thing. The op difference of opinion will be because of that is by the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we as insan, we will not know exactly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely... Wipe away the sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely remove the sin. Allah will either not punish you for that sin, irrespective of however it may be. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness is being there. And with that, there are some ways, other ways also, that how we can have our sins being forgiven. Just as this hadith mentioned, that you follow up a sin, you follow up an evil deed with a good action, it will wipe off the evil deed. Similarly, we know different ways and there's other methods of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will utilize to remove sins and forgive the man, that mankind or that human being for the evil that he has done. And one most important one is that of Tawbah, repentance, turning sincerely to repentance, in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you acknowledge your wrong and you turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawbu illallahi tawbatan nasuha, you seek repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere repentance. Secondly is that of Dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned a dua mukhal ibadah. The dua is the essence of ibadah. And dua is the only aspect and is the only tool and weapon, as Rasulullah sallam mentioned, that it can avert that of the, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Allah accepting your dua. So sins are forgiven by dua. So we commit a sin, we make tawbah, we can make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we do in this world. If we are not in this world, and we're in the day of on the day of judgment. It is not our action that will get us entry into Jannah, but on the day of judgment, it is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that will make us enter into Jannah, and that is the utmost end that we all need: the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Another aspect of sins being forgiven in this world is that of trials, tests, and tribulations. As we know, at the beginning of when this pandemic had befallen us, COVID, we have heard many reminders from scholars and from lecturers about being afflicted with a calamity how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the difficulty uh, by the difficulty afflicted human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by each turn that prick a person sins is fall off sins is dropped off from this record so by test and trial and tribulation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also forgive his sin and <clears throat> last but not least again is that from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned so that when a person performs wudu correctly, devoted in the right, correct way and method, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sins fall off his body and his limbs just as the drops of water fall off. With each drop of water that falls off, the sins fall off from his body. So which means doing wudu properly, doing our correct wudu and ablution, it will be a means for us having our sins been forgiven. Yes, 
the category may be general regards to minor or major sins. I've given a general category because we are not discussing of major sins and minor sins. The aspect of major, major sins is agreed upon with scholars that a person has to make sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for major sins to be accepted. But regards to other aspects of minor sins, these are all ways that minor sins have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And moving on towards the last part of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned wa khaliq in nas khuluk al-hasan or husn al-khuluk that you treat people with good character with good nature with good manner and good manner it's, it's a connection towards piety and it's a condition that a person can achieve a human being can achieve through to his correct piety to know if a person is his taqwa and his piety because it's something internally but to know how sincere a person taqwa is and to know how true a person is with his taqwa and his consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you look at how we treat others you look how we treat the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the higher degree a person is with taqwa he will respect and he will treat others with good manner because why most importantly this goes back towards the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said بُعِثُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I was sent to complete people with the best of character. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa having the best of character. Who are you and I to think that we may have taqwa and we're not treating people, we're not treating our human folk, we're not treating our colleague in good way and in good manner and good conduct. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the perfect example has told us that they have been sent to perfect good manners. And that encompass part of our taqwa. There was no one else that has a, a higher piety and higher taqwa, higher taqwa than that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was no one else that could have been a higher stage than that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that he was sent to perfect good manners. So having good taqwa, having good manners and dealing with people properly is that of a person through taqwa and show a person, it shows a person through inner taqwa that a person have. And not just verbally by speaking in our tongue, but it comes from inside. What we really have inside, that is what we will show outside. And with this, emphasizing this, another hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahsanukum, ahsanu, Ahsanu Islam are, are the best among the most complete believers. Ahsanukum Islaman, Afdalukum Islaman, Ahsanukum Khuluqa. Or كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام that the best and the most complete of believers is the one with the best manners. The best of believer is that of who has the best manners. So to be the best believer, to be the most complete person of iman, is that we need to have best manners. We need to have complete manners and show good manners towards our human folk, our human kind, towards our believing brothers and sisters, towards our neighbors, our kith and kin, to each and every human that we face. We need to have good manners and show them good manners and good conduct. So in short, I know we, uh, I apologize for going a bit lengthy on this reminder, but in short, to summarize, we need to be able to achieve the piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by achieving piety, we need to focus on these five points I'll mention. One is for us, importantly, we have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a primary aspect of achieving our, our piety. Secondly is that we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge over everything that we are doing. Third is that we know the evil of our sins that we do, the evil of our action that we commit, and we know the consequences of the committing that action, that wrong. Fourth is that we know how to control our nafs, we know how to control our soul and our desire. Or we control our desire instead of it controlling us. And fifth, we should know that shaitan use ways to misguide us and to uh, help us avoid from doing good and help us avoid from having the taqwa. Shaitan will use various ways and uh, uh, distraction to mislead us from that aspect. And we keep these five points in mind. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open ways and open method for us that we can be able to achieve true success in this world and the hereafter. Jazakumullah khair for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us all and give us all the understanding. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.